Thanks very much. Um, for anybody who would like to follow along, there's a short link for the slides and it's bit.ly slash tidy Tuesday. So that's bit.ly forward slash tidy with a capital T and Tuesday with a capital T. Thanks for the opportunity to talk with you today about an online data visualization learning community and what we found out about how accessible it is for blind people using screen reading software. So who are we? Um, my name is Sylvia Canelon. I'm a postdoctoral research scientist at the University of Pennsylvania, where I use the R programming language to analyze electronic health record data. I'm Liz Hare, and I've been working with R for about 15 years to do dog, working dog genetics and genomics data analysis. And I met Sylvia in my R, which is an organization of people from minority backgrounds working together to make R a better space for everybody. And uh, Sylvia had this idea, she had an interest in, in data accessibility, and she had an idea that she wanted to scrape up the information that was being generated by the Tidy Tuesday project so that we could see um, how often descriptive text was being added so that blind people could follow the data visualizations. There are a few things that we wanted to uh, give you to take away from our talk today. There are a lot of online learning communities around uh, R and other uh, data science software uh, mediated in places like Twitter and Slack that are very supportive and, and people are really enjoying participating. Tidy Tuesday is a specific uh, data visualization uh, project using the tidyverse packages in the R open source statistical practice programming language, uh, we found that 3% of the tweets displaying data visualizations had alt text, which would describe the contents of the data visualization in a way that could be read by a screen reader. 84% were described as image, which was just a default placeholder when the user didn't enter anything. So we're still wondering about how blind people can participate in these data science learning communities. Um, you may be asking why blind people need access to data visualization. I, I know that there are people who think that it's a form of communication that can't be transmitted in any other way, but most of the time it does need to be. Um, there are blind scientists who need to be able to uh, access, read the scientific literature and contribute to it and present their work. Um, there are more general applications in current events, things like election maps, um, in public health, we all would like to be able to have access to knowing the COVID infection rates in the communities around us. There are uh, some statistical software packages like Quorum and SAS that will use uh, vector-oriented graphics to produce data visualizations that have aspects that can be grabbed by a screen reader, but R doesn't have any of that capability at this time. Screen reading software provides voice or braille access to text that's on the computer screen. It does not describe graphics. You may be familiar with artificial intelligence image descriptions that are provided newly by some operating systems and Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, these processes have not been developed enough that they could meaningfully describe data visualizations. So then we wondered specifically about Tidy Tuesday and the ability of blind people to participate. So what is Tidy Tuesday? Um, so as Liz had mentioned earlier, it's a social project that happens on a weekly basis and it's part of a broader online R learning community. And it provides participants an opportunity to practice summarizing and visualizing data with modern tooling like the Tidyverse set of packages. 
On the right hand side of the screen is an embedded tweet, um, which is an invitation for people to participate on Twitter every week. And so this tweet was sent out by Tom Mock, who leads the social project. Um, he sent this out last night in preparation for today, which is Tuesday. And so we can see that um, the tweet includes, you know, information about the data set and where it comes from, about the project itself, and includes some, um, some relevant links that people can follow. And then on this slide on the left hand side is an embedded tweet showing an example of what one of these, um, what we're calling Tidy Tuesday submissions or, or data visualization shares, what they might look like and what they might include. So in the body of the tweet itself, um, there might be a verbal description, maybe the author shares their interest in the data or what they found. Maybe they share something about their learning process. Maybe they tried a new function or a new package. And then they may also choose to include um, some interpretation of the data as well. It, it can vary. Uh, the tweet can also include a link to the author's source code, which is another really important aspect of the social project as participants are encouraged to share their code openly so that others may learn from the process that, that went into creating the data visualization and then uh, reproduce it or modify it for their own, um, their own needs. And then, and then of course the tweet will generally have an image attached of the data visualization that was created, but rarely do these images have text descriptions or alt text attached to them. So how are the data collected? The tweets um, for Tidy Tuesday have been collected over time since April of 2018, which is when this project started. Um, and Tom Mock has been collecting that data and he makes them available in the Tidy Tuesday repository. And he collected this information using the R tweet package from R OpenSci. And so what I did then was I, I used that data to identify links for each individual tweet and did some processing and, um, and use the R Selenium package also from R OpenSci to scrape the alt text attribute that corresponded to the image in each of those tweets. So the right hand side now shows a screenshot of what it looks like for me if I'm in my browser in Firefox and I open up my web inspector. If I'm looking at the tweet that I shared in the last slide, um, you can see that on the left hand side, there's some HTML code that corresponds to that tweet. And so the way the R Selenium helped me in this process was essentially um, running a browser that would I would travel to each of these individual tweets, find the picture, find the image that was attached, and then um, take out that or scrape that alt text attribute. And so in this particular screenshot, we can also see the alt text for the image underneath the image itself in a block of text. And, and that's visible to us if, um, because we, there are certain extensions you can install in your browser that lets you see the alt text for different images. So that's what is showing up here. So what did we find after scraping? We found that over the three years of the Tidy Tuesday project, there were over 7,000 data viz tweets and only 215 or 3% of them had alt text. Participation in Tidy Tuesday has increased over time, but as we can see from these line graphs, the use of alt text is recent and remains really low. So what we see on the right hand side is a line graph where there's a gray line corresponding to all the tweets um, submitted as part of this project over time. And then there's another line that is a, a darker color and it shows the which of those tweets also have alt text attached to them. So we can see that for the most part, there has been increased participation in the project over time, but there hasn't been much change in how alt text is used in this context, except for at the end where we see this, this spike. And so that corresponds to um, a conversation that was had on Twitter when Liz and I found out we would be presenting at this talk today. And there was some conversation about our preliminary findings and, um, and some changes that were implemented because of that. So Liz, could you tell us where else alt text is missing in addition to this project? Yeah, there's a lot of great open source material, um, books and tutorials available on the internet and they're all wonderful, wonderfully searchable by Google so that you can answer the questions you have while you're coding. 
um, but many of them are lacking alt text for their data visualizations and also sometimes even display code as PNG images which can't be read by a screen reader. This problem is also found with Bookshare, which is a nonprofit that provides access to electronic um, books for people with print disabilities. They work with publishers who often also don't provide uh, alt text for images. They don't provide it themselves. And again, sometimes the actual code snippets are missing from those books and manuals. Um, a lot of our package, not a lot, but some our package documentation has data visualizations in it to show you how uh, these these interesting new tidyverse uh, kinds of graphs look and come out. Um, and it's really difficult to figure out as someone who's trying to display data and, and you can't see those what what the code actually produces. Um, there are also a lot of our blogs that have educational components, but again, are lacking alt text or lacking access to the code. This happens both at the individual level, as we mentioned, with things like blogs, and also at the corporate level, where our studio's documentation on their websites is often missing uh, these accessibility features. So uh, one of the things once we had, had uh, scraped these alt texts, um, we were interested in, in asking what about them makes them good and what about them makes them effective. And based on my experience um, online and, and reading media and also going through each of the alt texts that Sylvia scraped, um, the first the first item that uh, I felt was really important was that something is shared about the uh, what the data is showing what what is the meaning being conveyed 34% included that 28% included a uh, description of what variables were on the axes of the data visualization. 12% had some indication of the scale of the axes or a way to find out what the scale was from the description of the data. And this one is pretty important too. Um, you need to tell us what kind of graph it is, is it a line plot, is it a scatter plot, is it a QQ plot or a residual plot, um, and 56% provided that. I'd like to also add that there are a lot of really cool, uh, modern, new, and also some very specialized kinds of graphics, especially within Tidyverse, that uh, if you're using something that's, that's a little less common, it would be really good to provide some orientation to how the data visualization works and what it's saying. So um, we saw in the line graph a couple of slides ago that there seems to be something changing um, now. And so we wanted to ask, you know, is the tide, you know, has it started shifting? Are we sort of noticing changes um, outside of this as well? So we know that conversations are happening within our and different spaces. So one great example is the Use Our Conference that's happening this year that Liz is a part of and one of the organizers uh, volunteers for. Um, the conference itself has been very intentional about centering accessibility practices into the conference in terms of how it's delivered and, and in a way that makes it as accessible as possible for participants um, that are attending as speakers or that are just attending to um, participate in the different talks and tutorials. And as Liz mentioned earlier, the MyR community is also uh, a space where we're having these conversations like the one we're having today. And there's an accessibility committee within um, that community that Liz and I are a part of and that um, where we regularly meet and discuss these things. And then within Tidy Tuesday in particular, as I mentioned, when we shared our preliminary findings on Twitter, 
um, the leader of the social project, so Tom Mock, was able to um, add a whole section to the Tidy Tuesday repository about, um, or inviting and encouraging participants to include alt text and the data visualizations that they share on Twitter, uh, and includes resources as well so participants can have a place to start from. And then more broadly, we also have noticed conversations happening in other places. So Data Visualization Society had a conference earlier this year, Outlier Conf, that featured a few different talks about data viz accessibility. And then a variety of A11Y conferences and meetups also um, are having these conversations. There's also some changes happening with tooling within R. So one good example is that within R Markdown, which is very popular, there is now the ability to add alt text to a code chunk, so as an option to a code chunk, so that whatever graphical output that code chunk is producing, it can come equipped with alt text as well. In the same way that one might add a figure caption, now we can also add an alt text tag to that graphical output. But it is important to note that um, these changes are great, you know, but they are just starting and they're slow. So what can you do? You can make your data visualizations accessible everywhere that you can. So this includes adding alt text to websites, journalism, scientific publishing, social media, and other spaces. And in situations where alt text isn't available in your particular document or platform, try to find creative ways to describe your visualizations and words. Uh, Liz and I have pro provided a short list here of some resources, including a great blog post by Amy Cecil, the new chartability audit workbook by Frank Olapsky, and then another resource for well, and a few links specific to Twitter. So how do I even add alt text to the images that I attach? Um, how can I you know, see the alt text if I want to? What kind of extensions are available? And then you know, are there extensions available to help me remember to attach alt text to my images? There's a resource for that too, um, specific to Firefox, but other browsers will have them as well. So thanks so much. Um, resources, Liz's analysis, and also a link to the Tidy Tuesday alt text package that we use for this analysis is available um, in the link on this slide. Thanks so much, and we're excited to take some questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing this amazing and important work that you've been doing and, and tips for us all to do better. There's a question, there's lots of questions, but I think we only have time for one. And so Jess asks, are there any good resources for testing what the screen reader experience is like for people or accessibility in general? Yeah, so I think a great place to explore would be some of those A11Y resources. Um, so A11Y stands for accessibility, and it's there's a lot of conversations there that happen within the context of web development and um, and user testing and screen reader testing sort of part of that whole process. So I would encourage folks to check out some of those resources. Mm 